Hey everyone, I wanted to go over the workflow I used to create my Doctor Strange 3D animation that I submitted as part of the Project Odyssey competition. So you can see here, this is the whole workflow. I've segmented it into different categories and put labels so it's easy to find different sections. So here you've got your input, your prompt, <clears throat> utilities, sampler, etc. So I just wanted to walk through some of the sections here so that if you decide to use this workflow, you'll know what settings are relevant to change the result. So here in the input section, you've got your output video resolution. So with height, um, you've got your frame skip here, and then you've got the option to upload a video. So if you upload a video, make sure it's a alpha mat of a white subject on a black background. Um, and then you've also got your seed control here, some information about the input video. Um, and then moving over here, you've got your prompt section. So here you've got your positive batch prompt. So you could see for each of these frames, we're gonna change the prompt to something different. And if you want to modify this, uh, just make sure you follow the format. You've got your negative prompt here. Over here, you've got uh, some utilities. So this is just to for cropping and resizing the video. Um, grabbing a subject mask, creating a black background, and then this is just also grabbing the mask for the subject and help, it helps with compositing later on. So if we move up here, you can see this is where we do the mask dilation effect. So this is what kind of gives that uh, expanding mask kind of waves out from your subject effect. So the way this works is there's a new node I created called Dilate Mask Linear. So essentially this takes in a mask batch and outputs another mask batch. And you've got a few parameters here. You can change the shape from circle to square. Um, circle is slow to compute, but gives accurate results um, for the shape of the mask. And square is slower to compute, but is less accurate. And to see an example of what both both uh, types look like, here's square. So you can see it's less smooth around the edges of the mask. And then here's circle, which is much smoother. So you've also got the option to dilate a certain amount per frame. So this is how quickly the mask is going to grow. And you've also got a delay. So this will wait a certain number of frames before it starts the dilation. So you can see it's currently set to 12. So for the first 12 frames, nothing happens. And then afterwards, the mask starts to expand until it covers the whole screen. It's the same exact process for the green and the blue masks. The only difference is the delay is set slightly offset. So it takes longer for the green mask to expand and finally the blue mask to expand. And finally, we composite it all together. And so you can see what that looks like here. And then we set this output as the composite video, which is used later on. So down here, we've got our model section. So this is just where you input your checkpoint, um, any LoRa's, you've got your LoRa stack down here. Um, I would recommend using an LCM model for this workflow. I'm using Paradigm by Machine Delusions. <clears throat> Over here, you've got your Animate Diff section. So uh, pretty standard options. You can change the multi-vault dynamic if you want more motion or less motion. Um, you can also change the motion LoRa. I'm using Liquid AF, which makes the animation much smoother. Moving over here, you've got all of your IP adapters for the different mask colors. So these are color coordinated. You've got your white IPA for your subject mask, um, the black IPA for the background, and then corresponding red, green, and blue mask reference images here. Going down, you've got your control nets. So I'm using AD, line art, QR code, depth and open pose. For the competition, since we got multiple types of assets, I was able to just directly 
put in the depth video that was provided and also the open pose. Uh, for QR code, I'm using the composite video, same with the AD and same with the line art. And the reason I didn't use the input line art video from the competition was because this way the robot isn't filled in with lines and so it gives the model a little bit more creative freedom and also preserves the lines from the expanding masks. If we go up here, you'll see the sampler section. I have it disabled right now because I just was trying to get the masks working correctly. But once you're happy with the way the masks look, you can unbypass this. You can render out your video. Um, if you like the way it looks, then you can also unbypass the high res fixed script, which will add more detail and slightly upscale the video. Finally, in the output section, you'll see your result. You'll also be able to change where the video is ultimately stored by changing the custom directory or the file path. So yeah, that's basically the workflow. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I just wanted to give credit to Syncratic, whose Audio Reactive Dancers workflow I modified to build this workflow, and also JBoog's Creative, who also um, built the base workflow that Syncratic built off of. Uh, and if you want more information, you should join the Banadoko server, because that's where all of these people hang out. And it's a great place to learn and share knowledge. Thank you.